Number 45, integrated concepts. A 200 turn flat coil of wire, 30 centimeters in diameter, acts as an antenna for an FM radio at a frequency of 100 megahertz. The magnetic field incoming uh, electromagnetic wave is perpendicular to the coil at a maximum strength of 1 times 10 to the minus 12 Tesla. What power? All right. So intensity is going to be equal to a power over area. Solve that for the power. It's simply equal to the, then the intensity multiplied by the area. So here's the thing. How do we find intensity if we know maximum magnetic field? Oh, right. It's just this formula over here on the right-hand side. In other words, I can substitute now in for the intensity, speed of light multiplied by the maximum magnetic field squared divided by then two times the permeability of free space. Okay, good. Then multiplied by the area. Well, what? The cross-sectional area. So here they told you the diameter. It's circular, right? So then that's going to be pi r squared. The radius is then half of this, so that's going to be 15, but that's in centimeters, so take that, multiply it by 10 to the minus 2, and then square that. So let's plug everything in. So we have the power here is going to be equal to the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, multiplied by the magnetic field, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 12, as they mentioned that in the problem, squared, then all divided then by 2 times the perme uh, permeability of free space, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th, and then take that whole thing and multiply it then by pi times then 15 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. Having fun yet? So this is now going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 multiplied then by 1 times 10 to the minus 12 squared. Divide that by parentheses now 2 times 4 times pi times 10 to the minus 7th. Okay, then take that answer and then multiply that now by pi. Then times that by 15 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. So this is going to be 8.44 or so. No, 8 point... Yeah, 8.44 times 10 to the, uh, what do we got? Minus 12th. All right, and that's then going to be in terms of uh, uh, watts. Okay. All right, so that takes care of letter A. All right, so let's just maybe move this over to the side a little bit. Okay. Let's take a look at letter B. So it says, what average EMF is induced in a coil over one-fourth of a cycle? All right, so the formula from the prior, or maybe two chapters now, I can't even remember, is that induced EMF will be equal to the number of turns in the coil multiplied them by the change in the magnetic flux over the change in time. Now, remember, the magnetic flux here is a function of uh, the magnetic field multiplied by the area multiplied by the cosine of the angle. All right, but the angle they told us was perpendicular, so cosine of 90 is just 1, so, you know, you can basically just get rid of that, okay? So, um... Okay, so now what we realize is that uh, we know the magnetic field. Well, here it is, and we know uh, the area. Now, the changing area, right, is going to go from, it's going through one-fourth of a cycle. So basically, if you refer back to the other two chapters, the area, you know, we can assume it starts at um, full area and then goes to zero, all right? So in other words, the induced EMF here is going to be the number of turns, which is 200, multiplied by the magnetic field, which is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 12th, multiplied then by the area. Okay, now the area, the changing area, because the, the flux is changing because the area exposed to the magnetic field is changing. So uh, what's the area of this kind of circle, right, or this coil? Well, we already calculated it. It's actually over here already, right? So that's going to be pi times then 15 times 10 to the minus 2 squared, okay? And that whole thing now divided by the change in the time. But how much time is changing? Well, they're telling us over one-fourth of a cycle. Okay? Over one-fourth of a cycle. So, you have to think about this. This is basically the period. Right? One-fourth of a cycle. And this is the uh, frequency. In other words, they told you that the frequency is 100 megahertz. Or 100 times 10 to the 6th hertz. This tells you the number of cycles per second. Right? The number of cycles... So there's about, there's about one, 100 times 10 to the 6th cycles per second, okay? Uh, so if I were to take, let's say, how would I find then the, how would I find then the period? Well, I would just take 1 over this, right? So 1 over that would be the period. And then I can plug that into the calculator. So watch, this is 1 then divided by, so this would be 1 divided by then 100 times 10 to the uh, 6th. So that's 1 times 10. So that's 1 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. But that's the full 
that's the time it takes for a full revolution, but we only want to do one fourth. So take that and multiply it by 0.25. Okay, you having fun yet? So here's now 2.9, sorry, 2.5 times 10 to the minus ninth. Right, that's now the time. So 2.5 times 10 to the minus ninth. And let's see what we get now. So there's going to be 200 multiplied by then 1 times 10 to the minus 12th, multiplied then by pi, times then 15 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. Divide that all by 2.5 now times 10 to the minus 9th. And here we go. So this is about 5.65 times 10 to the minus 3rd volts. That's the induced EMF. And last but not least, letter C. If the radio receiver has, has an inductance of 2.5 millihenry, what capacitance to resonate at that frequency? So we can do this with by doing the resonant frequency formula, right? So resonant frequency is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the uh, inductance multiplied by the capacitance. So if we want to find the capacitance, we have to cross multiply this term on out, bring this on down. Square both sides. So we get rid of that square root. Okay, get rid of that square root then. So this would just be LC, and then divide out the L. Okay, so now you're going to have capacitance is equal to this whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. And this is now 1 over then 2 pi, multiplied by the resonant frequency. They told it to us in megahertz, but we need that in hertz, so 100 times 10 to the 6th. Okay, this whole thing then is going to be squared. And then divide that now all by the... Uh, inductance that's in milli no micro sorry micro Henry's all right and so that's basically now 2.5 times 10 to the minus sixth are you having fun now because <laughs> I certainly am so there's one divided by 2 pi times then 100 times 10 to the sixth get that value square the whole thing and then divide that now by 2.5 times 10 to the minus sixth and this now works out to be a capacitance of 1.01 .01 times 10 to the minus 12th farads. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going dizzy. So anyway, that's how you get through something like this. Just kind of throw some stuff down on paper. Just hope it works. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.